Firstly, uh, Honorable Minister, uh, Mr. Prithvi Raj uh, Jai Chandan, Har Hari Chandan, uh, Madam Ashwati, uh, Dr. Sangamitra, Mr. Sahu, Mr. Jaina, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, it's an honor to be invited here from uh, Mumbai to talk about uh, healthcare in Odisha. And I was wondering uh, why am I invited because I am not a local, I don't know uh, what uh, I can help in Odisha, but you know, some wiser minds thought that I may be able to talk a few things. But I just want to say that uh, from what I've been hearing, in, uh, you know, I, start, I commenced my journey in healthcare around 34 years ago. And when we were looking at the healthcare sector, we used to think, you know, someday it will have a great future. And for many decades, I used to think that future is very bright. But problem was, the future was not happening. But I'm happy to say that now, that the present is very bright. And future is, of course, brighter. And what we are seeing is the emergence of a healthcare sector in different parts of the country. And I'm happy to say that whatever I've been reading about Odisha is on the upward path. So there is a lot of uh, good news coming from Odisha now for healthcare also. But uh, just for perspective, for some people who may not uh, know the statistics, how big is the healthcare sector? So healthcare sector in the country is between three to four lakh crores uh, per year, and uh, which includes hospitals and in, in, uh, device manufacturers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which is expected to become 10 lakh crores in uh, five to seven years. That means that if we just keep doing the right thing, we will double and maybe two and a half times as, as a country. Now, the, the big thing is the growth of metro versus non-metro. So metros are growing at around 9 to 10%, while the tier one cities like Bhuvneshwar, et cetera, are growing at 12 to 14%. And what that means is that there is more growth coming from non-metros than coming from metros. So there is an opportunity here. Why is there an opportunity here? One, of course, we all know that, you know, income levels and middle class is increasing and a lot of people in, uh, in, in non-metros are now uh, getting wealthier. And you know the problem of, when we say the problem of there is too much traffic, there is no place in the hotel, there is no flight tickets, all that is an indicator that the economy is doing well and healthcare will do well because everyone will need uh, healthcare. But just to come back to the healthcare sector. The, there are three problems in healthcare. One is you need to provide access to healthcare, that somebody should be able to reach a hospital or a health center. Second is affordability. They should be able to afford what is being offered there. And third, that it should be available, that even if you are willing to give a physical infrastructure, where even if it is affordable, there should be somebody like a doctor or a nurse to make the healthcare available to the person. So these are the three main things. Of course, there are m much more, but these are the three main things. So now if you think of the access, with the latest initiatives going on about primary health center rejuvenation in the country and in Odisha, my uh, suggestion to the government through you, sir, is that in COVID time, we saw that the government and private work together. And because we worked together, we were able to defeat this menace. Now, healthcare, the problems of India as a healthcare and as the state cannot be managed either by private or by government alone, we have seen. So if we can look at more and more models where they can work together. So for example, if the primary healthcare and the secondary healthcare is provided uh, in some PPP with the government uh, by private, and quaternary care in town. So we make a continuum that's saying that this will be private, this will be public, but it is all one integrated healthcare. Madam, you are aware of this. The other key thing about this is one is of course physical infrastructure. Now physical infrastructure, all of you probably 
are aware that to set up a hospital is a very, very high capex intensive uh, 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 business. In a metro uh, or in a Bhuvneshwar kind of a place, if you want to set up a super specialty hospital, it will be at least a crore per bed plus land. So that means it is not going to be easy to set up a large hospital. Even if you set up a hospital, you need a doctor and you need nurses and there is a lot of shortage of doctors and nurses. So one of the suggestions which I, I have offered uh, is that there should be some kind of a uh, program and I am requesting you madam and sir to see, you know, Ghar Vafsi to Odisha. I don't know if you can use that word. That people who have uh, migrated out of the state and working in US, UK, Bombay, wherever, but they want to come back, let them come back and, and provide the uh, healthcare uh, here. So doctors and uh, nurses. And of course, nursing education. So there is talent is important. Technology is important for which investment is important and infrastructure. The other key thing which uh, we understand is that when we have the talent, you know, all many of you here are trying to recruit people. And I can tell you that there are many people who don't have jobs and who, are, who have the application for the jobs. But when you start to recruit, you don't find anybody suitable. At least that's my experience, very few people. That means they are educated, but they don't have the skills to be employable. So when we are talking about talent, nurses, allied health, we need to focus a lot on the skills. So as a state, if we can enhance the skill levels of the allied health professionals and the nurses, that will be a good boost to the sector. There is one uh, thing which I want to add. You know, I'm going to say it openly because people hide it and say it behind my back and everybody. They say, healthcare, we don't trust as a patient. As a friend, they will, but as a patient, they don't. And the reason for that is, is that everybody wants healthcare cheap. Now, the problem is, this is my view, that a human body in USA is the same as India. So why a treatment which is available to a patient in your hometown Germany should not be available in Odisha, should not be available in Calcutta, should not be available in Sambalpur, for example. So that means if you use the same equipment, the cost is going to be there. You cannot make it free. Somebody has to pay for it. So my request is that with the scheme of the insurance scheme which you have done so nicely, that the affordability, the ability to pay has to be enhanced. Because you cannot say that 1.5 Tesla MRI I will not use, I'm going to use a 0.3 Tesla. That is not possible. So you have to buy 1.5 Tesla, but whatever is the cost, you should have the aff aff affordability and uh, uh, to pay. So this leads to the second question, which is the trust and ethics. The success of any healthcare system, whether in a state or in a private setup or in a government setup, depends on the trust of the community with the doctor and the hospital. And, and many doctors are here and they will vouch for it that the trust comes from only two things. Very simple thing I say. Do what you say and say what you do. Don't do anything else. That's all. But problem is, we, we will say something because we want to tell, attract the patients. But when the patient is inside the hospital, I will give him something else. That is the problem. So I think the transparency should, and credibility in the private sector, because government, I don't think there is a concern, but in private sector, it should be a mandate that you should be transparent and and ethical. Just publish what you say. I mean, in a city, you have a Taj hotel and you have a Dhaba. So it doesn't matter. But you should still tell what you will uh, do. And 
One more thing, and I uh, saw Dr. Uh, Sangamitra here. The reason healthcare systems succeed, key things which is hidden, is the focus on education and focus on research. So, if we can invest in research and education, what happens is the clinical outcomes become better because of the teaching our clinicians become better, so the overall system moves up. So that I think should be, your, I think I'm requesting you to push that here. And I just want to say that uh, I, I know that now I don't know whether it is going to be one decade or two decades or five years, I don't know, when uh, Odisha will really become a, a super developed state with the adequate healthcare. But I think the journey has started and I am uh, happy to contribute in any wisdom or experience which I have. But wishing all of you a great conference and learning from this uh, meeting today. Thank you so much. Jodi Aponoko, a mobility of Holagila, the Bama channel could like, share, or subscribe Karipaku Jama Bibulon tonight.